<laughs> okay. So you guys, one, I need you to put those phones away. Again, throw them in your pocket, backpack. Keep those away for class. Um, if we have time at the end of class, again, don't assume if you have free time you can get it out. Like, ask me, and I'll be like, yeah, okay, you guys get your phones out. Um, so that first thing that we need to do, homework. Um, remember, we, we're doing completion. So I need you guys to show me that you did it. Right? Give you points. And then we're going to go over it and see, like, hey, does anybody have questions? How are we feeling? Guys, okay. I mean, even if you did it, like attempted, that's fine. I'm not. Like, again, I it's completion. You gotta show me, like, hey, yep, here's my attempt. And then we're, we'll go over it. If you're like, I didn't know this problem, we can talk about it. Yeah, I don't know how to do the, the 4.5 stuff. I sent you with the... Sierra, you got yours. Yeah. Okay. Again, I just need to see that you guys did it. Maggie, you had yours. Did anybody else do it? Guys, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Ah, right. Did you at least see most of it? I just saw the I just turned again. I wrote the point one stuff at the top. Okay. Okay. So what I need you guys to do is get um, a sheet of paper out, right? So one, if you guys did it, I want to know what questions you had. We can look at some of the answers and figure out how to do these. Two, if you didn't do it, <laughs> take some notes, right? We can talk about some problems. You can get a couple done if we talk about them. I don't want to do every single one, and I don't want to take a ton of time. Um, but still, finish this and turn it in to me, and I can at least give you half credit. Because that was my deal with you guys. I'm not, I won't grade your homework, but you guys show me you did it. We can review it, but again, if you don't do it in time, I still got to count it late, right? And, and I don't want that to keep happening because it, it just kills your grade, right? So what I want to do, I want to, oh, mix out of that. I think I have the answers up. Sometimes when we wash our masks, our dryer doesn't, yeah, the lint, yeah, so. our dryer doesn't pull the lint out, so I got lint all over it. I'm like, I don't want to put this on my face and just huff lint all day, <laughs> so I got to spend 10 minutes getting it wiped out. Yeah, and our dryer isn't <laughs> the best at all. Okay, so what problems did we have? Yeah. Okay, so we had these problems, right? So we had five problems. What ones were we clueless on that we can go over? Um, 15, 15, 15, 18, 20, 20. Okay. And then I probably did 16 wrong. I, I can show you the answer. Well, I guess this is fine. Even those of you that didn't do it, I can still show you the answers because I'm not grading them. You just need to show me you did it. So that's fine. I was about to say, like, oh, I can't show these, but. Um, so here, here's our solution manual. The 15, you got an 1,100 kilogram artillery shell that you shoot. What's the force on it if it's accelerated by this acceleration? Well, how do we do this? How do we calculate the net force on an object? We just do is F equals MA. So, so what I want you guys to get in the habit of, this is good science, especially physics. If you're starting a problem, you need to think through, like, what equation do I need to use? Like, what am I calculating? What am I figuring out? As soon as you know that, write your equation. 
And again, I 100% recommend literally write F equals MA. Take the time to write out your equation. My process when I problem solve in physics or all my engineering classes, right? They almost all use an equation. I would write it down. Immediately below that, I would replace F with the force if I knew that. I basically plug in everything I know. I rewrite the equation. I see, oh, F is the only thing I don't know. Then I just do algebra, right? I really encourage you guys to get into that habit because it will help you stay organized, have a, a, an attack plan for every problem. Because almost every problem is going to ask basically require you to use a formula and solve for an unknown. Well, if you write it down, plug in what you know, and you say, wait, wait, I don't, I don't know two of these things. You're like, crap, I need another equation or I need another variable. And then you just plug and chug. So your mass was given. It told you how much that object was accelerating. Well, if I got F equals MA, and I know MA, I just literally calculate F. You're going to take the mass of that object times the acceleration. What are my units for my force? What do we? What's that? Fucking force be. Newtons. Now, technically, you could have written kilogram meter per second squared. That's true. However, it's tedious. It's kind of a waste of your time. Newtons is the same thing as kilogram meter per second squared. Also, keep in mind your units. When I plug my numbers in. What happens if this had told me 1.1, um, what would that be? Megatons, megagrams? I don't know. How about if it gave you like, I can't do my mental math. If this was given to you in grams, so it would be, what, 110,000 grams? You can't plug grams in here because you you won't get newtons. So you need to pay attention to your units. Sometimes it might give you the force in kilonewtons. You don't want to put five kilonewtons and calculate. We don't do F equals MA in kilonewtons. We do it in newtons. So you'd have to put 5,000 newtons. It's another thing. Pay attention to your units. Any questions on this? The second question was, well, what's the force on the ship? Well, that's Newton's third law. Every action is an equal and opposite reaction. So if something pushes on that artillery shell, it had to come from somewhere. Well, it comes from the ship. The ship is providing the force to push up. Well, that means that force is also applied back on the ship. We got 15. What was the other question you had, Josh? Number 18? Yeah, I know, but it's 16. Well, 16. 16 is saying push backwards by another player. You know the mass, you know the acceleration. What's the force of friction? I don't know if I said that right, but then when you write this, you so if it says the net force, right, you exert 800 newtons, and you want to know what the friction is. So you got net force, or the applied force minus the friction is the, the net force. You know his mass, and you know his acceleration. So you got to plug in and say, oh, the only thing I don't know is my friction force, and solve for that. What forces on the winning player exert on the ground? What force does the winning player exert on the ground to move forward if his mass plus equipment is that? Well, if he moves at the same acceleration and he's moving both himself and the other player, I need to do mass my known acceleration plus overcoming friction to see how much he has to push. That's where that he pushes 932. 
the friction resists was 692, which we calculate up here. So that's how you do that one. Does that diagram make sense? Again, this is F equals MA. 18, you said, Josh? I wasn't Okay, so this one. So this one is basically saying you got a trampoline that's trying to accelerate a known mass by this much acceleration. This, you're going to look at F equals MA. I have some object and it's accelerating. I want to know what force caused it. The force has to be the net force. Well, what forces act on that person? Well, gravity's always pulling them down. So I've got to include gravity. I make it negative because it's pointing in the negative y direction. The force pushing up on this person on the trampoline. Well, that's the trampoline, right? The tension, the stretchiness. So I put that as, you know, F trampoline. I know it's positive because it has to push up to get her to bounce, right? Well, both of those forces, the net force from them, is her mass times her acceleration. Her mass, her acceleration, I plug those in. And in this case, she's got two. So this one, they assume she's going down both directions. I feel like you would have subtracted those. Oh! Yes, I apologize. I, I don't like the way they wrote this. I would do this. F equals MA. The force. Force trampoline minus force gravity. We agree with this. Gravity's pulling her down, the trampoline's trying to push her up. Those are the only forces acting in the y direction. Her mass times her acceleration. Now I plug in what I know. Ft, that's what I'm trying to find. Fg, I know that. The force of gravity is just the mass times 9.8. So that's why this looks weird, is I'm going to do 45 times 9.8. That is the force of gravity equal to her actual acceleration, which is 7.5, and I'm going to leave it positive because her acceleration is upward. Then I rearrange. That's what they did here. They moved this to the other side and then pulled out the 45. I don't like simplifying all in one step. I like to do my equation and do step by step because that's how my brain works. To me, this was saying they're adding accelerations. That's baloney. That's not what's physically happening. So what you would do is you would calculate this. Ft equals 45 times 7.5 plus 45, 9.8. Calculate that, that's the force of tension that has to happen to accelerate her this way. Does that make sense? I don't like this. This is. They show their work, but I, I don't I don't like doing it all in one. So that one again is another F equals MA. Was 19 another one you do? No, it's 18, 20, 20. Oh, yeah. Okay. 20. You're climbing up a rope. What's the tension if they're at a constant speed? F equals MA.
Well, the mass, what's the only, what's their acceleration? What acceleration is happening if they're at a constant speed? Nothing. This is zero. This whole thing goes to zero. What forces are acting on the gymnast? Gravity. What prevents her or him from falling to the center of the earth if gravity is trying to pull her down? Huh? Kind of. What happens if that supporting force is in a string or a wire or something? Tension. Tension is pulling up. Gravity is pulling down. That means this is zero. So tension has to equal the force of gravity. That makes sense. The two forces acting are balanced, therefore there's no acceleration. These two forces are equal. I know how to find this number. It's just mg. 60 kilograms, 9.8 meters per second, 588 newtons. Right? F equals mx. Two forces acting, no acceleration. They have to be equal and opposite to be balanced. I know this. Do my math. Now, if they're accelerating, I do my the same thing. I want F equals MA. My mass, 60. My acceleration, this person is actually accelerating at 1.5 upward. If I know it's upward, I leave it as a positive. Otherwise, I'd have to put a negative sign. Well, my forces are the same. Tension in the rope pulls up. Gravity pulls down. So the net force of these two has to create this kind of acceleration. Well, T minus 588, we know that's what mg is has to equal whatever 60 times one and a half is. I got an algebra equation. Take, multiply this out, add that to the other side, so my tension equals, if you do the math, 678. Do you see how the rope, the tension in the rope has to be higher than yeah, it has, not only does it hold the person, it has to also allow her to accelerate up, or him. That should make sense. If I'm crawling up a rope and accelerating upward, that rope needs to give me more force to let me accelerate. So that's that one. Again, F equals MA. Break down the net force into what force are acting. Are they up or down? Add the negatives and positives. That's your left side on the right side. You know the mass the object. It told you how much it was accelerating. Plug in what you know. You got one missing thing. Algebra. We're starting with F equals MA. We're going to do F equals MA until we're sick of it. Because it's such a fundamental piece of physics. All right. Let this one I don't want to spend too much time on. I want to get going for what we're doing today. So if you got a kid in a scale, right, like sort of like at the grocery store, you know how you weigh your fruit in? Imagine you put a baby in one of those bowls and it says 55 newtons. Well, F equals MA. The only force is force of gravity. Mg, Mg, you just solve for M. If the baby weighs 55 newtons and the spring scale is supporting that, well, that means the tension is just the weight of the baby, right? Gravity's trying to pull the baby down. This tension in the scale keeps it steady. So they're equal. Now, you, this one you need the picture in the book. You got to break it apart. I, again, I don't. 
want to spend too much time going through this because I know we got stuff to do. It's as if you had two scales. This tension has to hold the scale and the baby. So there's more tension here. This scale, it's got something pulling up on it, so it only has to pull up the baby. So there's less tension here. Any other question about the homework? Again, I, I want to get going with what we have today. Again, for those of you that didn't finish it, just complete the rest of the problems and get that turned into me. Um, you could even send me an email if you wanted to with a screenshot or a picture. Just show me you did it, and I can give you credit. All right? So I want to get rid of that. What I want you guys to do um, today, I want you to get out 2D and 2E. So we're going to focus on 2D first. And we're going to work through this together. Two D, I want to finish up because it's base. It's related to what we did. Two D is Newton's third law and eliminating internal forces. So this is what I want us to do. The situation that we got, we got a train pulling different carts. They all have different masses. 1,000 kilograms, 2,000 kilograms, 1,000 kilograms. Right? Now remember, we talked about systems, right, where you can identify a single object, and if you basically cut an imaginary line around that object, you want to look at what acts on the object. So, the 3,000 kilogram cart is the one in the very back. This one is 3,000. 2,000, 1,000. What it asks us is draw all the forces that act on this cart. What's your number one answer? Gravity. Gravity. Now, we also have to remember the size of our force matters. 3,000 kilograms, that's pretty hefty. So gravity, right, mg, if you have a big mass, gravity is pretty strong. So I'm going to draw this pretty big. FG. What else do I got? What supports this from going to the center of the Earth? What? What force? Normal. Yes. Force normal. How big is it compared to gravity? Same. The same. In the Y direction, we have no motion. So the forces are equal. So I need to draw this about the same size. Force normal. What do I have in the x direction? Again, I only want this right now. What forces are acting in the x direction? Friction, right? However, our question gave us the cars travel on bearings with negligible friction. They're so good that friction we're not even going to consider. So we know, okay, friction's not acting on it. What else is acting on this cart? Not the tracks. That would be friction. The train. The train. Right? Do you see this link? In order for that thing to move, it needs to be pulled. Well, it's being pulled right here. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, there's this force. Um, you can, I would call it F3. Right here it labels, like this joint is F3. So this train, it's all linked. It's pulling it. The pull happens right here, so we got to include that. These are all the forces acting on cart one. Now we got to go to cart two. Well, this is easy. Gravity. Does gra is gravity acting stronger or weaker than our third cart? Weaker. Weaker. There's less mass, right? Mg. This I need to draw shorter. Because again, your free body diagrams, it's crucial that you draw the direction of the force as well as the magnitude. And the way you do that is the size of your arrow. Well, my normal force, I know, balances it out. So I draw it about the same size. Do the best you can. It should be obvious that they're basically the same. That's the only things acting in the x or the y direction. What about the x direction? Yeah, something's pulling this car forward, so I know over here, F2, is there anything else acting on this part? F3, yeah, right, you gotta imagine, I literally cut around this, well I'm cutting through this link. There's a force there, right? This has to pull on this. Well, this force is pulling back. So it's restricting. This is F3, the same force here. This car is pulling on this one, but this car also resists and pulls back. Why did I draw this force bigger than that one? Yeah. Right? This force here has to pull both of these cards. Well, that means this has to be bigger. All right, now I'll look at the third one. Well, this one's easy. The force that's pulling on these two carts is the reaction right here. That's F2, right? F2 pulls back on this cart. Well, what pulls it forward? You can, yeah, the train, you can call that F1, right? They're labeled in the picture. Is that going to be really big or really small? Really big. Really big. The force that acts on this hinge has to be able to pull this, this, and this. You could also think about it, if these other trains pull back on the first cart, whatever you pull on the front cart, the net force has to be able to pull this cart forward at a certain amount of acceleration. If they were equal, this would not move. Well, we know it's moving. This force has to be bigger than that force in order to cause motion in that direction. Well, then here, gravity is really small on this guy. It's only 1,000 kilograms. Fg, Fn. You see that? This has the smallest mass, so gravity is the smallest. Normal force balances it. This is a little bigger, it has more mass. This is the biggest, has the most mass. Now what you need to do, right, you see directly below the image, there's a line. It wants you to do F equals MA. On this one, I only have one force in the X direction, right? So I literally just write F3 equals you can put M3 times the acceleration. We're going to just leave it as a variable. Yeah, yep. That box, 
right underneath the, the diagram is telling you, hey, fill in F equals MA. Well, we're only looking at the X direction. The only force is F3. It's in the positive X direction. It's equal to the mass of the, this part times its acceleration. Now this one. We have two forces acting in the X direction. Yeah, F2. I'm going to put it up here. F2 minus F3. Now why did I write it like that? I'm looking in the X direction. F2 is in the positive X direction. I wrote it positive. F3, hey, it's in the negative X direction. i got to indicate that when I add my forces. And it's equal to M2 times A. All these carts are linked. They're all moving at the same acceleration. So whatever forces act on this object have to create the same acceleration. The last one's the same thing. I got F1 in the positive x direction minus F2 in the negative x direction. I got to add up all the forces in the x direction. What are they equal to? M1 times A. Does that make sense? Do we follow? All right. Now, this might be a little tricky, but it's important to know this skill. Now we're going to say, hey, I'm not going to be able to. Now we're looking at two cars and we're going to pair them together. So this was at the back. You had this car linked with this car. This is our system. Again, imagine you cut a line around your system, and whatever things you're cutting, those are the forces acting. Well, I got gravity, don't I? And I got normal force. What else acts on the back two carts? Yeah, this link right here. So I'm going to draw... F, G, F, N are balanced, and the only thing is something is pulling it forward. What's pulling it forward is F2. Do we get why? If we look up, if we cut around these, I want to know what acts on this group. Well, F2 is the only thing I'm severing. So that force is pulling on this whole clump. Oh, that's clever. I think in this zoo cage, it says F equals MA. I think 1687, which I assume is when... That was F equals MA. Sorry. Anyway, that's not important. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but with a different system. I'm looking at the 2,000 and 1,000. I'm looking at the front two cards. Well, if I draw a line, right, if I cut this, what forces do I going to have? Gravity, normal force, this force, and that force. Does that make sense? on these two carts. Now my gravity is going to be a little smaller, right? The mass of this system is less than this, so I'm going to make it a little smaller. Fg, whoops, Fn, pulling to the right, I had F1 
F1 was pretty big, wasn't it? And then I had a little F3. We following that? We have this little force pulling back, right? The resistance from this part. And then the train engine itself pulling at this hinge. That's what I cut when I look at my system. So those are my external forces. Then I got to do the last thing. This is everything. All three carts. Well, what acts on all three carts? The only thing actually being applied is this force, that hinge force. So here I got F1, and I got a huge gravity and normal force. Because I have all three of the carts. Gravity acts a lot more here, or a little more here, than it does there. And again, I looked at all three carts. So nothing's pulling on the back side. F1's the only thing pulling on the front side. Bless you. And then you can write the equations easy, right? F equals MA. Well, what force is in the X direction? I just got F2. And I have M2 plus M1, or excuse me, 3. That is the mass of my system. They're, I'm pairing them together. Well, their total mass is this guy plus that guy. I need to incorporate that into my calculation. So I'm treating them as a grouped object. And then acceleration. You can do the same thing here. F1 minus F3. F1 minus F3 is the total mass of my system. So M2 plus M1 times the acceleration of my train. Everything's moving at the same rate. It's just different forces acting on it. Finally, I got just F1 equals M1 plus M2 plus M3. The system is all of them. I need to find the total mass. We'll just add up all three and then accelerate at A. Does that make sense? Everybody with me so far? Well, if you go to the back page, it's actually really easy. Note that at the beginning it said, hey, the acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. So if I go here, and it asks me, like, hmm. What's all the forces? Well, this equation we could use, we just wrote this. The force of that first link is equal to the total mass times acceleration. Well, this is 2. M1 plus M2 plus M3. What do all the carts weigh in total? Or excuse me, what's the mass of all three carts in total? 1,000 plus 2,000 plus 3,000, right? It's just 6,000 kilograms. So then what's my force? F1, 12,000 newtons. I just use my equations that I drew, figure out, hey, this force, it has to pull all three masses. We know the acceleration. Plug and chug. F2, that was given, right? If I look at the back two carts, F2 is pulling them. Well, their mass is 2,000 plus 3,000. They accelerate the same rate, so F2 equals 10,000 newtons.
What's F3? Did we have an equation that gave us F3? Yeah, if you look at the very first thing we did, we looked at the last part, and there was only an F3 force acting on it. F3 equals M3 times A. Well, mass 3 was 3,000 kilograms. The acceleration, the same as the whole train, 2. So F3 is 6,000 newtons. Bingo. At this point, we have all the equations. We just plug and chug. We just do algebra. Questions? The last part is pretty straightforward. Why does F1 have to be the biggest? Right? Why does this force have to be the biggest when this F3, this is pulling the heaviest part? Why is this bigger than this one? Also carrying the other two. Yeah, you guys see this? This hinge has to pull all three parts. Now they're all moving at the same acceleration. So if I have more mass, I need a bunch more force. That's why this is huge. This guy, sure, it pulls the heaviest part, but it's only 3,000 pounds compared, compared to 6,000. So in a train, which hinge is most likely to break on, on a train? <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Weight. Yeah, it has to pull the most force. It has to pull literally every cart behind it. The train's moving at the same speed, the same acceleration. It's just that hinge has to pull, create enough force to accelerate everything behind it with the train. The last cart, <laughs> this hinge only has to pull one cart. That's all it has to do. Does that make sense? All right. So now this last one, this is the last sheet I want to do before we... Two E. Uh, I want to go through this before we get to, we're going to talk about friction today. Got a guy pushing two blocks. They have very different masses. M2 is a lot bigger than M1. They start from rest. What does it mean if it says the surface is smooth? No friction. Yes, we have no friction. And it tells us, hey, frictional forces can be neglected. Sometimes it'll only say, pulls it across a smooth surface. That's their way of saying, eh, eh, don't include friction. So again, we got to use our free body diagram. This is going to be block M1. This is M2. What forces act on M1? Yes. We got a little bit of gravity. A little bit of normal force to balance. No motion in the y direction. So these are the only two forces. They have to be equal opposite. Isn't that guy pushing on the first block? F, you can call it push. What happens when this block is being pushed against M2? M2 is getting Yeah. Right? When 
Whenever I push on the wall, the wall's pushing me back. So that block is pushing on M2. M M2 is going to resist and push back. Whoops. And this is, we're going to just call it F2. That's fine. Now, obviously, the push has to be a lot bigger in order to accelerate it that way. Well, what about M2? Let's look at the big block. Gravity should be bigger than M1, because this block is a lot more massive. Fg, Fn balances it out, boom. The only things acting in the y direction, they're equal and opposite because there is no acceleration in the y direction. Well, if we know, is he pushing on the second block? No. Again, imagine you cut around here. What forces did I cut through? Cut through gravity and normal force. Didn't I cut through this interaction? This block pushes on M2, doesn't it? It's pushing on it. So then I got to draw this guy. Just as block 2 pushed on block 1, block 1 pushes back on block 2. So this you can call F1. If you wanted to do it formally, you could say F2 on 1. Block 2 pushing on 1, this would be block 1 on 2. Do we understand this idea that when you look at a system, you imagine that you cut everything directly around that object, and whatever you're cutting through, those are the external forces. That's what you need to draw. Are we with me so far? Three body diagrams, super important. We're describing what's going on in reality. Now, this is the opposite of what you guys did before. Right? They gave you the math steps, you've got to explain them. Well, this tells you what was done, you've got to show me the math for that. Well, they started with F equals MA. Sum of all the net forces equals the mass times the acceleration. Easy. They tell you, hey, the net external force is just F push. I'm wanting block two. Right? This is a little confusing because I don't like this. I'm going to have you guys erase this and say the blocks. The reason I'm doing this is block two is a specific system. We want to know the whole thing. Well, what force acts on the blocks to cause it to move in the horizontal direction? What's the only force acting? The dude pushing. The dude pushing. There's no other force that's being applied to those blocks. So the net force is just F push equals MA. That's what it said. The net force is just F push. Second step you did. It said, hey, the mass of the system is actually mass 1 plus mass 2. So instead of writing mass, I'm going to do M1 plus M2 times AX is still F push. Do you see how we're going step by step? We're filling in these variables. And you said, yep, hey, the mass of this system is actually equal to M1 and M2. 
Then it says solve for acceleration, basically. Well, how do I rewrite this equation for A? Yeah, I gotta rearrange, don't I? Algebra, how do I get this alone? Well, I gotta divide this out to the other side. AX equals F push over M1 plus M2. Literally just a step for algebra. Because I'm wanting to solve for this acceleration. This is where the question makes sense to ask about block two, because they say, huh, if this is the acceleration of the system, and mass one and mass two move in unison, whatever the system does, mass two does. So literally, the acceleration of block two equals this. This is how my system moves. Block two moves the exact same way. So if I want to tell you the acceleration of just block two, like it originally asked, you know it's the same as the system. So it's just this. It's the total mass force applied divided by the actual mass that's being pushed creates a certain amount of acceleration. Block 2 acceleration equals the system's acceleration. Last part. Look on the back. It's a good conceptual question. If you add a third block to the front, the boxes are pushed with the same force. The guy pushes just as hard as he did before, but now he's got a third mass. Is the overall acceleration going to be larger, smaller, or the same as when he just had two blocks? We got smaller. I like that reasoning. John said, hey, it's going to be smaller. He's not pushing any harder, but he's trying to push more mass. Yeah, it's definitely going to accelerate less. You could also think about it. Remember, um, acceleration equals the force that you apply divided by m total, the mass of whatever system. If this goes up, what happens to this? Come on, you just said it. If my mass goes up, this stays the same. If this increases, what happens to my result? It decreases. Right? Think about your fractions. If this is 1 over 2, that's a half. If I do 1 over 10, that's a tenth. A tenth is a lot smaller than a half. What's the original? This? Oh, total. Total, yeah. I, I simplified it. It makes more sense to me to say, hey, the total mass of your system. Now, this is a big conceptual question. Realizing if I push the same amount on more mass, I'm not going to be able to do as much, a.k.a. less acceleration. Are we following? Okay, good deal. I just, I wanted to get through those two because that was kind of review from third law and second law. What I want to do now, I don't think I'm going to have time to do both. No, we can't afford that. 245 we get out, correct? For 12, sorry for that. 12.45. Um, what I want to do is I think we're going to do this lab and then we'll do the notes later.
So what I have here is we're going to do a virtual lab. And it's going to be investigating friction. Yep. So again, we're going to take advantage of a FET simulation. And we're going to try to investigate the force of friction. Because we really haven't talked about it much. We've talked in general. Oh, sorry. We've talked in general about the friction force. We've labeled it. But we want to figure out, hey, how do I actually calculate what the friction force is? How do I know what it is? So what I want to do, I think we're going to take the rest of class to try to get through this. I don't know how long it'll take. I'm not sure. Um, this friction lab, we're going to look at, there's actually two kinds of friction. Now this should walk you step by step. Again, as you go through this, let me know if you have questions. Um, I don't know how it'll go. Because I know this stuff, I've learned this, but I don't know how it'll go if you don't know it. So if you have any questions, let me know. But it should go step by step. Right? The first part, you can do some of it, but not everything. We're going to have to talk about it. The lab itself, literally just Google um, FET force in motion. Should be the first one. There's multiple options. We want the friction option. Once you're in that lab, it's got instructions to enable all these values. Right? We want to see all the information. We check all these. And then it should go step by step. Say, so, hey, what if I had one box? Calculate the force of gravity. Calculate the normal force. Calculate the kinetic friction. Well, it does that for you. So again, this should go step by step. Um, there is going to be a part where it's going to ask you to use a program. And I want you guys all to download that program when you get to it. Because we'll use this for actual labs. It gives you instructions. It's called graphical analysis. It's a Vernier software. It should just be the first one when you Google it. And you can download it straight. Can you install stuff on your guys' devices? Depends. Depends. And you would just say, hey, download for Mac, and then install this file. You guys can try that. I want to confirm if you're able to. I really hope. It is cool, isn't it? You can also pause it, set up what force you want, and then plug it, and it'll carry it all. Can you try doing the graphical analysis on your computer? Yeah. Like the software, I want to see if you can download it. Just literally like Google graphical analysis. It's, a, it's from Vernier, which is like the laboratory. Should be the first one. And I just want to make sure if you guys get that one. And there should be a download from that. And 
And again, you guys, this lab, um, treat it like a lab, right? Take it seriously um, because I'm going to collect these because I want to give you lab points. Labs are a big part of this grade. So I want you to take it seriously, work on this lab, and again, it should be step by step, and it's basically going to kind of introduce you to the two types of friction. And I want to collect this and give you guys a lab grade. Because again, your lab grade is a big part of this class. But unfortunately, again, labs in person are really hard. One, because the equipment, we don't have the everything that I would like. And two, we have some virtual students that makes it really challenging. If we do an in-person lab, they kind of miss out. I'm trying to figure out how I can do both. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. If something doesn't make sense. It did? Oh, good. Okay, good, good, good. So then, this one of the one of the steps tells you you can do manual entry. So you literally type in whatever data you want, and it'll make a graph. And that's what you'll want to do. So like. Right here, it says, hey, open this program and do manual entry. And you can literally type in your numbers. So the x values, you're going to type all the force normals. That will be the x variables. And the y variables will be force of friction, or kinetic friction, which is what you pull from the simulation. You make a plot, and then you'll use it. So good, I'm glad you confirmed. You guys should be able to download that graphical analysis software like it's asking you in, on the second page. Literally just Google, ideally, Vernier graphical analysis. It'll be the first link. It's a free download for Mac OS. You install that program and then you can run manual entry. And it's literally just a graphing software at that point. You can type in data and make a plot and that's what it asks you to do. Now for actual labs, we'll use that same software and it'll read data straight from a sensor and we'll get graphs. So again, you follow instructions, right? Go through it. You found this. You click all these, right? You can turn them all on. So each mass, you're going to push the object until it's moving fast and then let it go. The friction force, which is your red arrow, that's the kinetic friction that you're going to write here. So the first scenario, you've got one box. You're going to push it until it's moving fast and then just let it go. See that friction force? That number you write down here. You also need to write down, hey, what was the mass of the object you pushed? Or the box, 50. What was gravity's force? Well, that one you can calculate, right? So you just calculate 50 times 9.8. Normal force, you should know, huh, there's only two things acting in the y direction. That means normal force is equal to gravity force. And you go item by item. You'll push different objects really fast and then let it go. And whatever that friction force is, you're going to write down in the far column. Th this is just gravity, right? How much does gravity pull down on 50 kilograms? Mg. At 50 kilograms, what's the acceleration of gravity? Yeah, so the force of gravity is mg. So you just take whatever mass you have times 9.8, and that gives you how many newtons your gravity is. Your normal force, they're going to equal each other. So whatever this is, that's what that is. And then the kinetic friction is that red arrow. Once you push that block, get it going, and let us go, friction will slow it down. It's that red arrow. That's your kinetic friction. So you plot all those. Once you get that first table filled in, you're going to use that graphical analysis and type in the normal force and the friction force. 
and it'll make a plot for you, and you can use that software to analyze the slope, which is very important. Where do you expect to be? Yeah, yeah, they're equal. Yep, yeah, because you know, gravity pulls it down. Normal force is nine miles an hour. Yeah, she's going over ten thousand. So yeah, those are always going to be equal. Good. I go up to in the ocean. Download that program. It's a pretty simple and actually really nice program. This is why I'm not done. Well, it probably bogs down with stuff. No, I don't have a thing. But like, have you cleared your like cookies, your cash? Yeah, I tried to do that before. It's just too too slow. No, just I'm just like horrible. That's weird. It really shouldn't. Yeah, I don't know what this is. I was having this issue like last year towards the end of the year as well. Uh, I couldn't like wake up my iPad every day. And then I had my cookies and then I was like, yeah. I want to fall out. Well, that's weird. It, it, I mean, they're not the most powerful laptops on earth, but they should do basic stuff like this easy. Yeah. I mean, they haven't been making them since 2016. I mean, I, my Mac, my personal computer is the MacBook Pro with the CD drive, uh -huh. and that was, it's a 2012 model, but it was made in 2016, and it's lightning fast. It still works, yeah. Yeah. Now, I'm mad because it doesn't get Big Sur, the new Mac OS update. Uh -huh. My computer is the cutoff point, and I was so mad, because uh -huh. now I don't get updates, and yeah. I don't want to have to buy another Mac, because I got mine for free and then fixed it. Oh. So it cost me like 80 bucks. Smart. Yeah, I, I like tinkering with computers. Yeah, I didn't get it for free though. My buddy, he it, it crashed on him, uh -huh. and so he, I a year later, I was like, "Hey, do you still have your old computer?" He's like, "Yeah, it's in my closet." I was like, "Can I try to fix it?" I figured out one of his RAM slots is bad, uh -huh. and the hard drive cable is busted. So I just replaced those two things. It was a ten dollar cable, um, and then I got an eight gig hard drive stick, a RAM stick, and put it in one bay that worked. Yeah. The other one would freak out and sh crash it. Yeah. So I still have 8 gigs of RAM. That cost me like 50 bucks. But now I have a $60 MacBook Pro. Have you ever thought about like cooking stuff? Like getting like the cheap one? I have. I have. I just I don't have the time. I bet you could. You sound smart. I bet you could. I could. I just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Maybe in the summer. You oh, can do that for a living. So right now the simulation will run. It'll do what you're doing. So you can say, hey, he questions that. So, so this yeah, is something that we're going to figure out. Girl, you girl, see girl, how you're girl, girl, yeah. And it's not yeah. doing anything. Watch eventually. Bro, how does that old girl up? Keep pushing through harder, harder, harder. I'm not going to lie, she's coming. It'll start moving. That will be something you'll do later. And yeah, it's important. Yeah. Yeah. This, this part, all it's saying, if you go back here, it says, um, Basically, you push on it oh, until it's going really fast. I forgot to right, push really hard on it, and then just let it go. You see what the friction force is? Yeah. That's what you would write down. So for this object, the friction force is 94 newtons. Yeah. That's the force of friction slowing. So you write that in. So basically, you're going to push it until it goes fast and then let go. And whatever force of friction slows it down, that's what you write. Now these two, these are easy. Gravity is just literally mg. So 50 times 9.8 gives you how many newtons of gravity. Gravity and normal force, they equal each other all the time. Right? There's no motion, so they equal each other. So I just copy that. You'll plot it later. Then what you can do is do the next one. Right? So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to put this guy, the man, 80 kilograms. Same thing. I'm going to push him. Get him going. I want him to go pretty fast, and then I'll let go. My friction force there is 150. So you record that, calculate gravity, calculate normal, you know, put those in. 
and eventually you'll finish your table and it'll ask you to use the graphical analysis to plot certain things. You just type in your data, plot it, now you have a graph that you'll interpret to get something meaningful from. Normal force, remember normal force is basically what resists gravity, right? When I put this book on the table, gravity wants to pull it to the earth. The only thing that's stopping it is the table. That's the normal force. So in every situation, this block is not moving in the y direction. So the gravity force is balanced by the normal force. So these will always be equal. Does that make sense? Yes. Then, you know how to get this? Yeah, you get it moving, and then let go. Let go, let go. See, it's going. But it's slowing down. What's slowing down is friction. It's decelerating. That's what you write down. Friction force is 90 newtons, 94. Then you change your scenario. Calculate there, you got that. And then when you do the man, you do the same process. I want to start pushing in, get them going, right? And then I'll let go. So the friction force on the man is 150. I'm going to write 150. And then you just go scenario by scenario, and then you're going to graph it. Mr. 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 Sir. Do you know my name? Yes, Mr. Heisman. Mr. Ketchup. Pretty close. How did you do it? Nice Heinz. You were close. At least you didn't say Heinz Winger. <laughs> but did you even look at my name? There's no ER at the end of it. So find the one. It's backwards. Did you do this? Yeah, I already grabbed it. Oh, yeah, you did? I don't know what to do now. It should be in here. Yes, yeah, it's in there. So what do you do? It's, it's a really nice software. When we do in-person labs, you'll plug a sensor into this, uh -huh. and it'll figure it out. I'm not sure it works. Yeah, it, it should. So this is the software. Okay. What you're wanting to do is it tells you to do manual entries. You can either get data from a sensor mm -hmm. and it'll read all the data you're collecting and graph it, mm -hmm. or you can just use it as a graphing software. It's really nice. And then this. Can I also use my graphing calculator too? Yes, I suppose you could. No, but, I, but I have this for HCAL, so I don't have this Really, what you need to be able to do oh. is see a plot, right? You plot Fn versus friction force, mm -hmm. title it, and then sketch what the graph looks like, as long as you can do that, and then give me the slope and the y-intercept. You can do all that on your calculator, that's fine. Oh, it's just this is the best way to do it, because we all will use that software, oh. and it, it's really slick. But yes, you can use graphic calculator. Right. And now, also, I'm having issues with the website, too. The simulation? Yeah. Well, with your Sadly, there's a spike. And the code's down. Oh, oh. There it is. That's how people start doing things. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that's not a good or reliable way. I would just Google it. Oh, okay. Like, Google the name of it, and then it'll come up, and you can get directly to like, Google. But they're all very well organized, and you know, like, hey, yeah, that's the one I want. It's hard. Oh, I guess that's true. I mean, it's hard on your iPod. Have you never played on like Game Boy Advance before? Oh, I have. <laughs> before I had, had before it was backlit. Yeah. I had a, I had a Game Boy Advance that wasn't. Then I had a Game Boy Advance that oh, was backlit. Yes. The, the and then weird rectangle. Yeah, the SP. Well, I had the SP. The SP I love. The AGS one one or AGS zero zero one. Um, was it front one or back or back lit? I think it was side, like the lights shone on the side. Yeah, it's the front one. Like, okay. I, like it wasn't one of the weird. It was. Stores. It looked like a mini laptop. Yeah, there was the, the, the black. It was awesome. Yeah, that was probably zero zero one because now okay. I was, it was the one on one. So the worst one was like the back lit. It just seemed to be better. Okay. 
Because then I had that, I had a Game Boy Micro. Oh, yeah. I had one of those, I didn't like it. Um, I think they were both cool. They're actually and then cool. I had a DS1. The, that was the last the one. Micro's actually were fun to use. I know, we got rid of them. <laughs> actually, my sister might have one. She might still have hers in the ring somewhere. So that's pretty cool. Uh, yes, yes. then you're going to make a graph. <laughs> So one, if you got a graph with a calculator, you can do it as long as you can see the graph you have to it and give me the slope and the y. Otherwise, I would use any graphical analysis software. We're going to need that eventually. So you can do it, install it, and then you just type in your numbers, and it'll make a graph. Yes. Yeah, just Google graphical analysis. It'll be from Vernier, and you can just download the one from Mac OS. Yep. It's a really slick program. It's very clean. The Mac OS. Boom. And then just install that guy. And when you open it, you'll do manual entry. So what if I told you really cool story how this is a bowling? I don't know what to tell you. Because it's your internet, right? No, it's just my computer is just bad. I seriously don't understand. Like, I'm... I don't know what to do. This is why, like, because every three years they sell all of the, the MacBooks and get new ones. So after this year, they'll be selling all the media. So you well, have the this is cool. Oh, yeah. So this is, I don't care if it's $300. I'm just going to go out and buy a MacBook so I can do MacBook Pro and be done. Jeez. I hope you have it for like seven years. Well, yeah, because I know they're if I, so expensive. I know if I go buy this though, it's gonna be like dead. <laughs> it's gonna be like yeah, why? But why spend three hundred dollars on something that doesn't work? Or spend a thousand dollars on something that works really well? It's not a lot of money. Fair. What? It's not three hundred. To buy one of these is three hundred. I thought it was like one fifty for all of it. Oh. And then like three hundred or one fifty for Oh, if you want to grab for now. I'm there were three hundred. 300 for dudes, and then 350 for the teacher side. Yeah, I'm going to put that on the teacher. Yeah, the teacher what? ones are really nice. They're the hairs with 8 gig of RAM, which makes a big difference. The only thing I like about them is that they don't make them anymore, like the batteries. They, are, they don't last as long, and like the software updates are getting cut off. Like The batteries on these, I don't think are as good as what they are. No, they're, they're old and they're small. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... These ones, I mean, the, the, the Airs are good models, and at least having 8 gig of RAM makes them, they can do pretty much anything a basic user will do. Yeah. Like, my, my roommate, um, he moved to New York, he works for Google, he's a software engineer. Yeah. His laptop, his MacBook laptop has 32 gigs of RAM. Oh, wow. It has eight times more RAM than your guys' computer does. They're insane. His computer, pro that probably costs like three grand. Easy. Wow. Wow. And then his desktop, oh, I'm pretty sure, has 64. He's got the iMac. Oh, and those things are like 8 grand. Oh, yeah. They are money. That's why I see But like, it's Google. Like, I they're like rolling if in you it. Can, if you're smart enough to do it, you might as well just use that money and build your own computer. Yeah. Unless, unless you want Mac. Unless you want a Mac. You gotta pay for which the, the Mac OS is very nice. It's a very good operating system. But it's theirs, and they... Charge an arm and a leg, and it's not open source. You can't throw it on any machine. Yeah. So, so here you got to read X values or F N. Like, so your normal so now they charge. Here's data point one, two, three. So you're going to put four nine seven eight five eight eight two. That's the only thing. Y values are going to be the genetic version. They don't even make it. So you're going to plot. You're going to do four ninety and ninety four. And it'll start plotting for Samsung. Oh no. You see that? Yeah. Right, no, keep going. The four dollar Android phone. Seven, eight, eight, four. Same slim as a thousand dollar. And it'll keep plotting my phone. Just plot all of these. You'll get your graph. I mean, that makes sense. Give me a sketch of it, and then tell me the slope and the y-intercept. For those of you that um, have gotten to the graphical analysis, I haven't gotten the board yet. I know. I, I want to at least show you how to do this. So when you do manual entry, you're going to enter all your data. Right down here in the bottom left, you have graph tools. Oh my 
What was it, Brody? 490. What was the next data point? 784. Oh my god. So you guys, when you get a bunch of data, you got to plot all your data to get the slope of the line and the y-intercept. You're going to go, "Hey, at a curve fit, it's linear and it'll spit out, "Hey, the slope of your line is 0.19. Jot that down. The y-intercept is 0.66. Jot that down." Now obviously you need to put in all your data and then do this. But it's in the bottom left. Apply a curve fit, and it's you want to do a linear curve fit. It could be worse. Well, it'll be getting cooler as the day goes on. So I guess it's like 75 by 7, it's supposed to be 72. Do you you guys want to finish this lab as homework? I just want to start and do my actual homework assignment in class. Yeah, sure. Or do you want to do my homework assignment? It's one of the sheets in your workbook and finish the lab in class. Which one do you want? I can't even do the lab. I'd like to opt for Austin. Yeah, we probably need a lab at home so he can do the lab. No, I probably can't even do it on the What do you guys finish the lab? Well, I'm stuck on the lab. Sure, so I don't want to be able to finish it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. What? Finish the lab. Okay, so I want you guys to yeah, do your best. Finish this lab. We'll take a little bit to finish it up in person and turn it in. And then we'll do the assignment in class. All right, All right so I'll update that. Mm-hmm. <laughs>